So what a difference a week can make. You know, last week we were talking about the Edmonton-Vancouver series and whether or not the Oilers were going to be able to win five games straight. And of course, as many of you are probably well aware, they went on, they won that next game against Vancouver, and they did put up that five-game winning streak. And so then after that, the talk became, well, you know, how long can they keep this thing going? They have this three-game series coming up against Toronto. You know, can they win all three and become first overall in the North Division? And so at this point, as of the recording of this podcast, they played two games out of those three. And uh, fortunately, to the chagrin of, <laughs> I have to say, most Oilers fans, you know, this particular series has definitely not been going Edmonton's way. And so on the first game of that series on Saturday night, the Oilers lost 4 nothing. Then after that, the, the narrative changed a little bit, and suddenly all of the, the media people started to talk about, well, you know, if you keep Connor McDavid off the score sheet, it happens so rarely, he always comes back in a big, big way. You know, almost never in his career has he ever been held pointless in two straight games. And what wound up happening? Well, <laughs> Connor McDavid got held scoreless in a second straight game. The Oilers lost 3 nothing on Monday evening, and unfortunately I don't have a recount of a thrilling comeback to give to you in either of those two cases. And to make matters worse, not only did the Oilers lose both of those games, but they lost both of those games, not even to the Leafs' starting goaltender. You know, Frederick Anderson has been injured for these past two games. So basically, they lost these two games to the Leafs' second and third string goaltender. That's uh, it's a very frustrating situation. I'm sure that nobody in that locker room is more frustrated right now than, than Connor McDavid. So now he's been held off the score sheet for two consecutive games. I don't think that Connor McDavid has ever been held off the score sheet for three consecutive games. So based on that little detail alone, I think that people should probably expect that he's going to show up on tonight's score sheet in some factor, whether it's a big way or not. But that's still making a pretty big assumption. And I think that the way that the Oilers have actually played over the past four games, I think that if you were going to make any assumptions that you could consider to be a really safe assumption, it almost seems to me like the safest assumption would be to assume that they are probably going to fall down by a big margin early in the game. That's been a, that has been a trend with them in recent games. I mean, there was the game against Vancouver. They were down 3 nothing in the first. Same thing with this past game against Toronto. And the simple fact of the matter is that you cannot regularly be falling behind by three goals and expect to win a game. There is no team in this league right now, there is no team in the history of this league that has regularly been able to come back from a 3-0 deficit to win games. You know, it is still a pretty unusual feat. So what needs to happen to change the current trajectory of the season? Well, I, there are a couple of things that need to happen. I mean, for one thing, the goaltending needs to show up a lot better. You know, as I've said in the past, I think that good Miko Koskinen it's always just around the corner from bad Mikko Koskinen, and the same thing is with the same is true with Mike Smith. But the problem with both of these players is that you never know which one that you have until you actually have them in net and they're giving up bad goals. The fact is that over these particular three games that we're talking about, the game against Vancouver, the two games against Toronto, you know, they have given up some they've given up some soft goals. I mean, nothing so soft as the one that David Riddich gave up the other night in Calgary, but, uh, you know, so, you know, the goaltending situation, it could be worse, but the important thing to keep in mind here is that it could get better, and it needs to get better. But then what are some of the other things that need to change? Well, you know, this team needs to show up ready to play. And as... As much as there are a few people out there who have definitely not appreciated the questions asked about Connor McDavid's leadership, the simple fact of the matter is that making sure that the team shows up ready to play. I mean, yeah, the coaching staff has a very big role in that, but so does the team captain. And that was one thing about Mark Messier when he was the captain in, in Edmonton, when he was captain in New York, when he was captain on any of those minor league teams that he was on before he made it into the NHL was that he would always have that team ready to play. So is that a skill that Connor McDavid has in his repertoire right now? I have to be honest with you, I am still not convinced of that. You know, even as the team got into a very strong little stretch of play, you know, put up a four-game winning streak and then a five-game winning streak, you know, those are tough times to criticize 
to criticize a player, any player on the team, regardless of whether or not he's your captain. But in particular, if he's your captain, it's a little bit hard to criticize him. I have to admit that when things are going well for your team, it's not a great look to be out criticizing a particular player or even just questioning their ability to fill the particular role that they've been charged with. Now, I may not be convinced that Connor McDavid currently has that skill you know, to go into the locker room you know, and give that rousing talk and make sure that his players are ready to come out of the gate and play. I'm not convinced that he has that skill right now. But just because he has that skill right now doesn't mean that he can't ever develop that skill. Now, as I've said before, there are a lot of things that go on in the locker room that we don't know about. As a matter of fact, 99% of the things that go on in the locker room are things that we don't know about. You know, the media gets to see a very, very tiny little segment of all of the things that go on there. So it's possible that the problem in this particular situation you know, is not a lack of Connor McDavid in the terms of this one particular skill. But the people who get offended every time that you raise this question about whether or not McDavid is the player to do this sort of thing, I think that one thing that they are, one thing that they're overlooking is that I think that they're actually embracing what you would call the fixed mindset. And I think that they get their back up because they just assume that it's like, oh, well, if Connor McDavid doesn't have that skill right now, then he's never going to have that skill. But speaking strictly for myself, you know, I firmly believe that with the right coaching, with the right investment in his leadership abilities, with the right training, I think that Connor McDavid could develop that skill. In fact, I think that he is as likely to develop that ability as anybody else on this team is. I mean, personally, I think that with any player, with any kind of athlete, you always have to adopt the growth mindset. You know, even if it's a player like Connor McDavid, who is right now probably still the great, the best player in the world, second arguably to, uh, to Leon Dreisaitl, but a player who is arguably the best player in the world, he can still improve and he can still grow. You know, even if we're speaking in terms of something that you would typically consider to be an off-ice ability, I think that you have to accept the idea that he can still grow and he can still improve, because with an athlete, the simple fact of the matter is that once an athlete stops growing and stops improving, that's when that athlete has moved into decline. And so personally, I think that if you're an Oilers fan and you want to see Connor McDavid in an Oilers uniform for many, many years to come, I mean, at least for the duration of this big contract that he signed, then you have to embrace the idea that he can and should improve in these particular skills. Because if he goes into decline, you might as well trade him now while his trade value is at its highest. Now, personally, I don't think that the Edmonton Oilers organization is at a stage right now where they're looking to do that, and I don't think that the Edmonton Oilers fans are at a place where they want to see something like that happen. I mean, if you ever bought in, you know, to the idea of the promise and the potential of Connor McDavid, then this can't be the time that you're looking to blow up the whole team. But conversely, for a player to be able to grow at all as an athlete, the first thing that they have to recognize is that they have to recognize that there is a deficit there in any one particular ability. And so for those people who have actual defenses, like actual counter-arguments, to the question of whether or not Connor McDavid is the player to be the captain of the Oilers, whether or not Connor McDavid is a strong enough leader, you know, I'd like to hear them. But the people who don't have those arguments and are just reacting emotionally, I have to be honest with you, you are not doing the player any favors. You, know, you might think that you are, but really you're not. Because quite frankly, the way that you're reacting to this question, the way that you're responding to just the question, is actually the best way to make sure that the problem never gets solved. Now you might not think that there is a problem. You might think that there is really, there's, there's no issue there at all. Now at this particular point, after three of these past four games, you know, the three of these past four games in particular that we're talking about, I'm a little bit mystified that nobody, that somebody could actually look at this and say, well, yeah, no, obviously everything's fine. And so not even being willing to admit that there is an issue there, you might think to yourself, well, what do I care if it never gets solved? I don't even recognize if there's a problem. But until you've seriously looked at the question of whether or not there actually is a problem in the first place, you don't actually know if there is a problem or not. And just because you don't want to admit that there is a problem doesn't mean that there isn't one. 
Now, as I've said about this previously, and in fact, I've said this about a few different things, I wouldn't mind at all to be wrong about everything that I just said about Conor McDavid's leadership. I'm not convinced at this point that I am wrong, but if I do turn out to be wrong in the end, I'm not going to be bothered by that. So if you have your own two cents to add about this, I mean, like I have said before numerous times, please do drop them in the comments section below. I would be absolutely happy to see I would be absolutely thrilled to see people say something, you know, that's, you know, make a contribution that's, uh, that's constructive to the conversation.